Hi, I'm going to show you how to use the Esprino JavaScript interpreter for microcontrollers to um, control the speed of a fan. Now, this fan is just a standard Intel CPU fan. It has four wires. Two of them are power. One of them is an input that tells it whether to go faster or slower, and one of them is an output where it'll tell your computer how fast it is going. Um, there are some details on the Esprino website of how I've wired it up but basically you just wire pin to pin and put a single resistor in to pull one of the, um, the outputs up. So I've wired it to pins A8 and C8. So I'm just going to um, call some variables with those names so that we know um, it'll, it'll be more obvious when I write some code. So now um, we'll check whether we can actually see the fan speed signal. I'll just write a bit of code. This is, we'll use set watch, um, and set watch calls a piece of code every time the value of a pin changes. What we're going to do here is um, change the value of an LED to exactly the same value of the pin. If we don't set repeat true, it only happens once, which obviously isn't really what we want. So if we do that, we can now see the little light flashing. If I slow this down with my finger, you can see the flashing light slows down as well. If I stop it completely, the light stops. So now we can see whether the output works as well. Um, so if I say digital light, If I set this to naught, the fan will go as slow as it can go. You see it stopped right down and the LED flashes a lot slower. And again I can speed it back up again. So I'll, we're going to try and measure the actual RPM of the fan now. Um, but before we do that I'll just stop that light blinking because it's going to be annoying. If type in clear watch with no arguments, we'll just clear all the watches and it'll it'll stop everything we put on. So now we're going to write another watch. Um, and this watch is just going to call a function, which we'll define now, called the on fan movement. This is going to be called every time the the signal from the fan drops from a 1 to a 0. Um, it's much safer doing that than measuring it going both up and down because it may spend more time down than it does up. So if we need to do on fan movement. What we're going to do is we're going to measure the time difference between these two times. So we'll say, um, yeah, let's just make a variable. Now we haven't defined last time yet, but we are just going to set it up. So the thing is, every time this gets called, it's going to um, set D to the time between movements, and it's going to then reset last time to the time that it was called this time. And now we'll just set up the RPM. You know, the, the, the amount of revs per second would be 1 over the time that it takes. But because we're doing revs per minute, it's 60 over. Um, now it happens that these fans, they actually give out two pulses per revolution. So we'll just multiply d by 2. We've got this function. Um, if I just call... Well, no, actually, let's not do that. I'll just set up the watch now. In here we set the edge as falling. This is what I said before, we are only listen to the pin 
when it moves from a 1 to a naught rather than when it goes up from a naught to a 1. So that doesn't appear to be doing anything, but we should have a variable called RPM, which is saying about 350. Um, if we step back and we change it so that the fan goes slow again, hopefully we'll be able to read RPM again and we'll find it's much, much slower. So that's quite cool, uh, but what if we want to make it go at a certain speed? Um, so let's create a new variable called target RPM. Now we know that it, when it's going slow it goes about 70, when it's going fast it goes about 350, so we'll just try and aim for 200. So the obvious way to do this I guess would be um, if the fan's going slower than we want then we uh, make it go faster and if it's going faster then we just make it go slower and we'll just either turn it on or off depending on that. So let's step back to our function on fan movement and we'll just edit it. So we say digital right and fan speed out. And then we'll actually we'll just write a um, a condition in here. We'll say if RPM is less than target RPM. So when it's going slower than we want, this will be true, um, which will make the fan go faster. And it'll be false, which will make the fan go slower when it's going too fast. Um, now, actually, so that we can see what we're doing. Um, we'll just create a variable and we'll, we'll put it in there and then we'll, we'll flash an LED on and off with how we're controlling the fan as well. Okay, and now we can see this light is flashing on and off as it changes the speed of the fan. And it's a bit hard to tell there, but it's it's speeding up and slowing down quite a lot. And if we look at what the RPM is doing, it's kind of going up and down between, you know, 230 and uh, 180, 170 in cases. Which, so it's not doing a very good job of controlling the fan speed, really. So what we, are, we might want to do is we could, um, we could turn the fan speed output on and off much faster using pulse width modulation. Uh, this is actually built in um, to Esperino and you just use the command analog write. So if we change this to analog write, um, you won't actually see any difference immediately because it's still outputting on a 1 or a 0. But let's actually just remove this and we'll just set it to say 0.5 to make it on half the time. So now, you know, you're not actually seeing a huge amount of difference here, it's just slowed down completely. Um, it actually happens that it needs to be slightly more than 0.5. Now, 0.7, it's not on full speed, but it's not going slow either. And if we look at RPM, it should be pretty stable. That you know, obviously we can adjust this and we can do it by hand. Um, what we'd quite like to do is to actually um, adjust it automatically to get to our target speed. So let's create a new variable called fan drive. This will be like the amount of power we're telling the fan to put in. Um, let's set that at 0 0.7 to start off with anyway. So now let's uh, set this to fan drive. And actually, we'll we'll put in quite a, a simple piece of code here. We'll say if RPM is less than target RPM, then we'll make fan drive a little bit bigger. Else, we'll make it smaller. 
the chances of it actually being exactly where we want it are really slim, so we'll just we'll just forget about that for now. Actually, I think that's happening too fast. So now we don't see much difference. Let's check out what fan drive is set to. 0.73. And it changes a little bit. Uh, let's look at what the RPM is set to. 200. I mean, that's much nearer. And if we set target RPM to something else, we'll see the fans obviously sped up. And we can look at the RPM. And now that's pretty close as well. We can also set target RPM much, much lower. Now there is a problem with this. You can see it's slowing down slowly. There you go, and that's, that's pretty close. Um, so one of the problems is that um, this actually doesn't have any end conditions. So we'll look at fan drive now. That's pretty good. But we know that the fan can't go any lower than about 70 RPM. So if I set target M to RPM to 50, and then we look at what fan drive does, it's going to keep going down and down and down and down. It keeps going down. And it'll actually go down below zero. You see it's taking loads of time. But now, if we want to speed the fan up again, nothing's happening. It's taking a long, long time to readjust the fan. You can see it's, it's slowly moving it back up again now. And soon it'll start to speed up and then it'll work a bit better. So one of the ways we could get around this is, at the moment, we only call our function um, when we get a rotation of the fan, we call it twice a rotation. That means that when the fan's going slowly, it reacts very slowly. And when the fan's going quickly, it reacts very quickly. So instead, let's just maybe call it 10 times a second. So let's, let's find our code here. Copy this out. Oops. And delete it. And let's create another function called onTimer. And we'll just paste the code in. And now let's call onTimer. Ten times a second. So, in fact, that's a hundred times a second that way. So now we know um, we're looking at the amount we're incrementing it here. And to increment it from 0 to 1 will take a second if it's been called, will take 10 seconds if it's been called 10 times a second. Um, so we can be sure that the fan will be where it wants to be within 10 seconds. So now if, if we set on timer, sorry, now if we set the target RPM, hopefully it'll slow right down, and that's good. But of course we've forgotten to change fan drive, so again, fan drive will keep going down, and it'll be keep going negative. And again, if I lift this for an hour, and then I set target RPM back up, it would take another hour to readjust it. So let's change what we had, and we'll just make sure that it doesn't go above 1 or below 0. In fact, we can we can do this a lot more easily. We can say if fan drive is less than one, increment it. The same way we can do if fan drive is greater than naught. And now, if we set fan drive down, it won't ever overflow. <laughs> let's see what we've got. Okay. Target RPM to naught, and now let's check fan drive. Going down, and down, and down. 
but it never goes below naught. So now we can also play with this because we've seen pan drive, we can actually set it as well. We can just put it up to one and see what happens as it adjusts itself down to get to the, the low speed again. At the same time, um, we can also try and make it go to a certain speed. So uh, let's set this back up to 200 again. And we know that kind of whoops, we know that fan drive went down to about 0.7 for that. But if I put my finger on it to slow it down a bit. working yeah now we can see the fan drive is actually it's gone right up because the fan was moving um, it, the fan was unable to move so it was just putting as much power as it could in and now if we look at it we'll drop back down well that's about it thanks for watching